Okay, so welcome to our session this evening. I'm going to run through all the free support and resources that we provide through our climate and nature friendly communities network, which includes our Beautiful Scotland and It's Your Neighbourhood initiatives. So for some of you, you'll probably know a lot of this already, but hopefully there's a bit in there that's new to you, a bit of a refresher. And for anyone that's new, hopefully it'll give you a really good overview. Um, don't you have to scribble down lots of notes because I'll email the slides out in the next few days. Um, so if I don't have some of your email addresses, pop them in the chat and I'll get them after. Um, okay. So, like I say, I'm going to give an overview of Keep Scotland Beautiful and the initiatives, run through the support and resources and recognition. Most importantly, how you get involved and then a little bit um, about why groups take part. And then we will have time for questions and chatting as well. Uh, okay. So, yep, yeah, I work for the charity Keep Scotland Beautiful. Um, and this is just a little bit of background about us, that we're Scotland's charity inspiring action for our environment, and we want a clean, green and sustainable country. And every day we work to inspire changes in behaviour, to improve our environment, to improve the quality of people's lives, their well-being and the places that they care for. And we support the ambitions of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, our work fits under four key objectives. So first is combating climate change. The next is tackling litter and waste. The next one is restoring nature and biodiversity. And the last one is improving places. And the Climate and Nature Friendly Communities Network covers all of those objectives, really. So, yeah, and all the activities that your groups get under, get, get up to, really fit under those four objectives. Okay, so community engagement. I sit in the communities team and we have a range of community projects. But the Climate and Nature Friendly Communities Network, like I said, includes the Beautiful Scotland and Nature Neighbourhood initiatives, which I'm going to be mainly talking about tonight. So hopefully they should, you should, the groups who take part already, um, you should find that supporting, encouraging, inspiring, fun to take part in, I hope, rewarding. And yeah, one big element that I really love is being able to celebrate and say thank you for everything you do. And the most important part is they're free to take part in. So we um, hope that there's no barriers for anyone to take part. So for those of you that don't know what they are, so they're part of the UK-wide Royal Horticultural Society Britain and Bloom campaign. Um, they've been running for, well, it's the 60 years of the Britain and Bloom campaign this year. So it's been running for a long, long time and been running for, in 2026, it'll be 50, 60 years of the Beauty of Scotland initiative in Scotland. So again, we've been running them for a long time here as well. They focus on the three pillars of gardening or horticulture achievement, environmental responsibility, and really importantly, like community participation. And we find that so many of your groups are just pulling people in the community together, which is really, really important. So the difference between the two, so It's Your Neighbourhood is an individual project. So for example, a community garden, a community allotment, friends of parks group, and it's not a competition. It's about encouraging progression um, and just supporting you and recognizing what you're doing. The Beautiful Scotland initiative is for a whole village or a whole town or a whole city. So lots of different projects coming together, linking up and representing their whole um, community. And we have judged and non-judged categories within that. And for example, Dundee takes part in the city category of Beautiful Scotland, but there's a network of its neighborhood groups underneath that that get recognition in, in their own right but also as part of that wider city entry. Um, so yeah, everyone's coming together to make their place better for people, for planet and for nature. Just thought it'd be useful to share the achievements of all our groups and volunteers last year. So we celebrated over 250 groups, which I just think is incredible. Um, and we have have a, a pool, not a pool, but I have a, a number of volunteers, so over 30 who go out and visit all those groups and have a few here today with us. So hopefully they'll speak about their experiences later. And all of the time that our groups and our volunteers gave last year uh, equated to almost 200,000 volunteer hours. And I know that's a complete underestimate, but it's still amazing. And that equates to an economic value of two million pounds for all the, the, the timeless, uh, the work that you do for free. It's pretty incredible. We held two national celebration and showcase events last year, one being in person, which was wonderful at the Botanics. And we had over 30 special awards that groups could nominate themselves for and 
uh, win, which was brilliant, recognizing various things such as the best for biodiversity or best for community involvement. And we hosted and organized over 10 regional networking events, so allowing people to get together and meet groups in their own area. And again, they were a brilliant opportunity and we're doing more of them this year. So a little bit about the support and resources that you can get through Beautiful Scotland and It's Your Neighbourhood. So there's me. Um, so Alexi, I've been involved since 2008. So I like to think, well, hopefully I know. I know a lot and can signpost you in the direction you need for any advice, guidance. Um, yeah, always available on email or phone or can organise a little video over Zoom. And that's my details there if, if you're not already connected up with me. Um, there's obviously... You are our network. As I said, there's over 250 groups. You're all on different stages of your growing journey, huge range of skills and expertise, and you're all facing similar challenges. So it's just a great way to share and inspire each other and learn from each other. Um, yeah, so do, if you want to get in touch with groups in your area, let me know and I can I can connect you up. We send out a quarterly e-newsletter, um, which a lot of groups send stories in for. Um, so again, it's a great way to be inspired by others. We have a section which two of our uh, volunteers write. So John, who's here today, he will write a little bit about things he's seen on his visits or things he thinks will be useful for groups. Um, I provide links for external funding and resources that I hear about and any other organisations running events and activities. And then we put in updates of campaigns that we are running and the CALI, which is the Royal Caledonian Horticultural Society. There's a little section about what they're doing as well and the RHS. So yeah, it's quite a long read, but you can read it in stages with a cup of tea and a piece of cake, I reckon. We have our web pages, and the, the address for them is at the top there. And you'll find within those pages, there's a map. And the groups have said they want to be on it. You'll be able to see in your area all the different groups. There's a little bit of guidance about the three pillars of community, environment, and gardening. Um, we create a page for your group as well. And again, I'm always keen to get a photo from you for that page and any text and links you want on it. So again, if you're not happy with the page I've created, do send me things for it. We pop up the key dates, so things like seminars or um, when they are assessment visits or the period that they'll happen or if you're going to be judged. Uh, links to useful websites and we have a online resources section as well. So it's good to have us and explore and let us know if there's things you would like us to pop up there as well. Um, we run regular online Q&A sessions and we can see there the various topics we've had in the past and we've got one coming up. It's a project that's been created up in Aberdeen called Meadow in a Box and um, I'll be emailing information out about that soon. But there's it, we're holding on two days, one in the daytime, one in the evening in the hope that everyone who wants to attend, there's a time they can make. And again, if there's anything you'd like to hear for or if you'd like to come and speak, and share something at an online session, do let me know. Um, like I say, we have our wonderful volunteers and they're always there if you're needing a bit of support with something or a bit of advice, I can link you up. Um, some of them are happy to come out and visit out with their normal uh, assessing or judging visits. Um, and then I've just popped up the dates this year. So for Beautiful Scotland, the judging fortnight is from 29th of July to the 11th of August and assessment visits from your um, It's Your Neighbourhood Assessor are any time between May and October. And once registration closes at the end of April, I then work out the calendar of visits each of my volunteers will do. And then they'll get in touch at some point in May to organise your visit at a time and date that suits you and them. And yeah, and they, they create a report that highlights what you've done really well and uh, give you some helpful advice and signpost you to resources that they think might be useful for you. Um, and just a little bit about joining our volunteer family. We're always looking for people to join, particularly for It's Your Neighbourhood, because uh, we had 208 groups in It's Your Neighbourhood last year. So if you love gardening, you, you've got some experience of working with community groups um, and some environmental backgrounds, please get in touch because we're always looking for volunteers to join our family. Like I said, we do recognition and events. So every group no matter what you're taking part in, we'll get certificates, you get the, op the opportunity to apply for awards. Um, we'll often feature stories you've sent us in case studies, news stories. We've got an online spring seminar for our groups in Beautiful Scotland on the 1st of May, and I'll send more details out about that. And then for Beautiful Scotland, we'll, we're will we having an award ceremony, which Aberdeen are hosting for us on the 9th of September, which will be a daytime event. And then for all of our groups in Beautiful Scotland and It's Your Neighbourhood, 
we're having an online seminar and celebration in December. And again, more details will come out about that. Um, just thought, yeah, a little bit about the theme. I'll talk about that a bit later, but we have an optional theme every year to focus your activities and events around if you'd like. And this year we chose celebration and cake, which I think is a really nice one. Um, so like I said, this year we're doing a lot more regional events. And if you'd like to have one in your area um, and would be happy to discuss hosting it or getting together with some other groups, just get in touch. Um, we've got one a week on Friday in, for Lanarkshire and Falkirk groups. Uh, 15th of April in West Lothian, we've got one. 17th of April in Aberdeen and the 3rd of May in Renfrewshire. Um, and again, more details will come out about those as, as we finalise them. Um, like I said, the theme this year is celebration and cake. So uh, yeah, it, we think it fits really well with the Britain and Bloom 60th anniversary by celebrating everything that's to do with Bloom. Um, you might want to celebrate your volunteer efforts or perhaps you've got a project you want to celebrate or a particular area of interest such as your local wildlife or your local heritage. We added the cake bit because obviously we all know everyone likes a slice of cake and it's a great way to thank everyone who gets involved in your projects. Um, so whatever way you decide to celebrate, we would love to hear from you and obviously share your stories through our newsletter and social media. So get your thinking caps on. Um, so other resources that you can get access to through being involved with our initiatives are our Clean Up Scotland resources, which are available all year round. And whether that's um, our supporters pack helps you sort of gives you guidance on how to organize cleanups. We've got downloadable posters and social media cards. And um, we can provide you with a link to the local authority to borrow litter picking kit, or we've got a number of community hubs, again, who host litter picking kits that you can borrow. And we have fantastic mascot costumes you can, you can borrow as well. Um, we're in our going into our spring clean period, so that's a we do a real push for groups to get involved and carry out cleanups. So if you go to the web address there, you'll find out all about those. Um, also, uh, we are a member of the Garden for Life Forum, and the web link there will take you to pages within our website. And there's there's quite a few really useful downloadable guides on how to garden for wildlife, whether that's for bumblebees or birds or um, yeah, so have a look at those. And there's links to lots of environmental organisations on the pages as well. So if there's a particular thing you're interested in, you can um, get in touch with them through that. And because it's part of the Britain and Bloom campaign, you get access to resources and support from the RHS as well. So this includes discounted insurance. Um, they also send out a regular e-newsletter. E you can access their free plant advisory service if you you're wanting to find out what would be the best plant to plant in a particular uh, wet area or drought area, they have their horticultural advisors who can help you with that. And they also have a really good community resources online section. So how to engage more people to volunteer with your group, uh, how to create sensory garden, that kind of thing. So really worth exploring those as well. And very importantly, how do you join or rejoin? Because, because they're annual initiatives, you have to re-sign up every year but it's a really really simple form and registration is open till the end of April so those are the two web links there um, beautiful Scotland again just a reminder is for a whole village whole town or city and it's your neighborhood is for a is not a competition so it's if you don't want a competition or you're a, a, a standalone project like a community allotment friends of parks group um, it's very very varied but if you have any questions just get in touch and I can point you in the right direction um, okay, so I'm going to come on, I'm going to show two little videos. Some of you might have seen a couple, one of them already. One has just come out. Um, so the first one is one of our It's Your Neighbourhood groups. Um, I was really lucky to go and have a visit there and my colleagues have created a little film of our time there. And then the second one is one of our groups who was new to Beautiful Scotland last year. And I know Kevin is here, so when we come back to the Q&A, he might want to share a few things too. Um, Okay, so I will just move on and fingers crossed the videos work. In April 2021, Fairlock End Community Allotment was created. In that time, various members, alongside full-time worker Susan, have planted, cared for, grown 
and built the allotment up from the ground in Easter House, Glasgow. Members of all ages and backgrounds joined together to create a green space for their community. How did you get involved? Oh, it was your dad. It was dad, dad. we were wondering what was going on in here because it was never occupied. Yeah. And obviously Susan's now obviously here and look at it now. Uh, it's bloody. What do you get out of coming here? Peace and quiet, fresh air, <laughs> learning. Definitely learning a lot. It got me out, to be honest with you. It got me out. When I came across it first, I just loved to come sitting. <coughs> To Susan and talking to the people, various people that come up and down and it's it's meeting everybody and as Susan says learning to pot and learning the different um, flowers and different things plants. As you got older to be honest you're not you don't grow vegetables yourself yeah. so it's nice to be able to do things like that here. We've also taken um, some of the children along to the Daffodil Club. We like all the intergenerational That's working right, isn't yes. it? Who, who pinches all the strawberries? <laughs> <laughs> the intergenerational aspect of volunteering is huge at Fair Lock End. It is a place of constant learning and socialising for all the community. There are a range of spaces, each with its own purpose. A place for creativity, a sensory haven, a whole corner dedicated to storytelling, somewhere to try out the delicious produce and an area for arts and crafts. Schools and nurseries have been given responsibility of their own plots to grow produce. College students have volunteered their time to build structures and instruments to use within the allotment. What, what do you three do in the garden? I have Susan's plant. Um, um, we pick one She told me like, this place was fun when I was in magical wedding birth, so she told me to come volunteer. And then you know, it was it was good. I've volunteered for like a few months now and it's been good, honestly. Fair Lock End is a pillar of its community, providing connections through sewing, planting and learning. From its inception, those that give their time here have strived to make it a safe haven in the Easter House community. Stories are shared, friendships are formed, and the laughter and song can be heard from all over. Um, so hopefully you were able to see and hear that okay. Um, yeah, just a wonderful project and like we have so many different projects across such your neighbourhood. So I know that your projects will be very, very different, but um yeah, it was a lovely one to go and film. I'm just gonna go try and I need to try and sign up a little bit for the next one. One second. Yeah. Um, or if you can turn up your sign for the next one, that'd be great. I can't see how to minimize my screen at the moment. Um let's see what happens now. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh one of our beautiful Scotland entrants who was new last year um in Pullman. So hopefully this will work. Beautiful Scotland is a community environmental improvement initiative run in partnership with the Royal Horticultural Society with the aims of supporting groups across Scotland as they seek to improve and enhance their local environment. Support and resources are free and readily available on our website. Welcome to Pullman! Pullman Community Council joined Keep Scotland Beautiful's Beautiful Scotland initiative in 2023, which has celebrated and acknowledged the group's incredible improvements to their town. Pullman, the community council has been running for probably 40 years, if not more. And it's really in the last three, four years of that, that something's been put back into the community. It's been phenomenal, it really has, to see. You know, none of this was here a couple of years ago. The group restore planted areas, create colourful planters and hanging baskets, and garden with children. 
their larger events, the Christmas light switch on, has been extremely successful two years in a row. An individual in the community said, I live on my own, I've not been out in months, and this is great. Will you do it again? Feedback like this motivates the group to further their projects. I think putting the two scarecrows in a prominent place here, it drew a lot of attention because there was people stopping, there was people going to the chip shop to take pictures there, there was cars stopping in the street, and it was bizarre. It just, it was quite surreal. The nurses' children come along, the head of centre in there is very keen for them to come along, and um, I think as well, if the wildlife area in, then that's obviously there's a lot of learning involved in that as well, and opportunities to learn more about wildlife than they do just in their own garden. The group has brought their community closer and shows great strengths in the beautiful Scotland pillars of community, environment, and horticulture. In beautiful Scotland, there are non judged and judged categories. Polmont Community Council chose to be judged, so their village was assessed by our volunteer judges Colin and Joy, with the three pillars in mind. Within their first year of entering the Beautiful Scotland initiative, they won a silver gilt medal and the best small town trophy. To actually go to the award ceremony and get, come away with silverware and a silver gilt in our first year of trying, and it was like, it's all thanks to these people. To learn more about Beautiful Scotland, please visit www.keepscotlandbeautiful.org forward slash beautiful Scotland. So thank you to both Fairlock End and Pullman for letting us come and film in their communities. So it gives you a little taster of what some of our groups get up to. Um, I'm gonna pull down the slides now so I can see you all. Um, and hopefully, you were, I know the sound wasn't that great on the last second one, but hopefully you were able to get a little bit of a, a taste for what the groups get up to. Um, I know you were there, Kevin. I don't know if you want to add anything about your group. Hello, everybody. Uh, no, no, I think it's it's been an interesting year. I think we've really had quite a, it's been a fun time. Sometimes it's been a hard work, but we've kind of got a lot of places into a better state they were. In the last couple of years, it's looking nice. We've got Alison, we've got Michael, we've got Louisa, we've got Archie. There's a lot, there's a big, massive group. We've got Liz, we've got Jean. There's a massive group of us now, and everybody brings something to the group. It's a really good group. Uh, we've got other plans, we've got other ideas this year. We're starting to get, we've been out a couple of times, but not. The weather's been kind of against us this year. It's been quite a... It's not been the best of weather. Uh, so we're starting... We've got plans on this weekend. We've got a couple of things to build. We've got some more planters to go in further up the village. So we're going to, we're going to start getting on and looking forward to this year. Brilliant, yeah, because you've signed up again for this year. We have, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Kevin. Um. Bob, you're here from Blooming Inverkip because your group's taken part in Inter Neighbourhood for quite a number of years now. So I don't know if you yeah. want to share anything about your group and how it came together and Yeah, how... certainly. Hey uh, hi there everyone. Uh, so my my name's Bob and uh, uh, I've been involved uh, in the Blooming Inverkip project down in Inverkip and Inverclyde since uh, 2019. And I Really, we when we just started, it was none of us really knew what we were doing, and we just doing a wee bit of research, and uh, a couple of people had recommended about uh, just getting involved uh, with, uh, you know, keep Scotland beautiful, and we, that's where we found it's your neighbourhood, uh, and essentially we've been members for five years, I think now, Juliet, I uh, and uh, I think the kind of benefit that we we get out of it uh, is. It's, it's, it's just the, the inspiration we see with seeing all the other groups. Uh, I think that obviously that inspires us because we see what other people are doing. It gives us ideas, gives us suggestions. Uh, but also meeting the people involved, uh, you know, people that uh, join who's uh, with us this evening, uh, Nancy, uh, Angela Smith and so on, and just getting the advice and, and things like that over the years. Uh, it, it just reinforces the kind of confidence element of things that we're, what we're doing is making a difference in the community. People are enjoying what we're doing. Uh, and it reinforces the fact that, you know, uh, 
what we're what we're doing, uh, you know, kind of mean, means something to the local people. I uh, and really, I think sometimes it gives us a bit more confidence to be a bit more ambitious as well. Uh, which we we are being a wee bit for this year because we've got projects galore ongoing. Where I, uh, you know, uh, I sometimes feel that even though I work in a nine to five in a day job, as it were, uh, I sometimes feel the feel that running the community garden down at the community hub is is more my passion, and 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 basically that's what it's become. This has become a full time job, and I, I just work as a hobby. I uh, and I'm sure other people can relate to that. I. Uh, but certainly, I don't think we would be as far on as we uh, we are now, uh, and as comfortable with what we're doing if it hadn't been for our involvement with uh, Keep Scotland Beautiful and uh, it's your Neighbourhood uh, uh, program. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Paul. So I was like, you know, we sit in the office not not knowing what the impact is, but that's yeah. But a lot of that is the volunteers we have that come out and visit you and share their advice and expertise, which brings me nicely on to John, who is hiding away there um so john has been volunteering for us for a long long time for both it's your neighborhood beautiful scotland green flag yes, the world, yes. i mean basically yeah. <laughs> yes uh, but to come back on to bob i mean the thing i do like about the group and in in the kip is they don't take life too seriously um i put a picture and in the newsletter of them carrying a greenhouse along the main street um so really what I'm getting at is the whole thing is meant to be fun. It's not to, and it's not meant to be a drudge. For myself as a visiting mentor assessor, it, it in it's my summer holiday. And to say to people I go to John Chapel and Easter House for my summer holidays, people say, Oh, you must be joking. But it's actually meeting the people. And the great thing, and Juliet has highlighted it, is the cake and also the celebration. And one group I've had slight involvement with, see, see, there's no point in stopping the cake and coffee. We're here to work. And I scream at them and say, that's not what we're here for. And I'm sure that Wendy would also agree. And also the groups that, and, that are here is the whole thing's meant to be fun. Um, and there's so many networking opportunities with other people. So I said, I go through to Glasgow because I'm not welcome in Edinburgh, it's very sad. Um, but That's I enjoy getting, I know it's not true, but basically I enjoy getting in Cathedral Glasgow. I enjoy meeting the people throughout Glasgow and also in the West. Um, Juliet mentioned the group at Barshaw Park who are part of the it and just part of the network. Do pop into Barshaw. They were one of the partner gardens with and with the RHS. And also they're working with the and with the defense garden scheme. And hopefully some funding will come on board. In Edinburgh and, and at Lawson Castle, we're one step ahead because we've got our garden already established, which we're going to dovetail the defence garden scheme into and get veterans from close by from Salverson to do some work. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of things that you can do. And it's involving children. Anyway, I've waffled for far too long as per usual. I haven't at all. Thank you, John, for sharing that. Um, I don't, Wendy, I don't know if you want to say anything about your volunteer experience or your group experience. Yeah. Oh, there sorry. You <laughs> Just trying to come off mute there. Well, I, I've been very fortunate because, as you know, I've um, well been part of a group and obviously involved in assessing and a little bit of judging. So. Um, and I think actually having that experience of being in a group and uh, working alongside other people and also being aware of what all the challenges are, because sometimes it's not easy, sometimes not everything goes to plan. But as a group, we got a lot of support from our judges and our assessors. And I suppose that eventually motivated me to... Um, be part of that and um, visit groups myself and share the knowledge that I've gained over the years and the experience that I've gained. And um, yeah, I, I I love visiting groups and um, it's it's a wonderful experience. And I, I hope that sometimes I'm able to um, share information and experiences with them that they find useful. But equally, I always take something back because people are always... It's amazing how innovative and creative um, groups and individuals are. So it's it's a great experience, yeah. Yeah. So without kind of picking on and just kind of on you, Wendy, um, you do go up to Gerloch and to the 
garden there. Could you tell us a wee bit about that and just what great things they've done from and just from nothing? Oh, absolutely. Well, that was phenomenal. Yeah, they took a massive, massive, um, unloved, very um, untidy space that the um, local authority had not been able to manage over many years. It was really in a state of disrepair and they completely overhauled the, the entire area and they've laid... Um, well, they've just created masses and masses of gardens, seating areas, flowers. They now have bus tours coming from all over Scotland. Um, and it's just, uh, I mean, there are thousands of, of bulbs that have been planted. Um, it, it's just phenomenal what they've achieved. And they've worked with schools. They've got all their businesses engaged. And uh, it's a fantastic experience going up to visit Gaelock and seeing how they have sort of managed to engage the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good example. Thank you both. Um, open floor now for anyone who has any questions about any of the, the information on the slides that I gave or questions for each other or wants to share something they're proud of that their group achieved, achieved last year. Um, don't be shy. We're all very friendly. Um, Can I? Yeah. Can I ask? Could I just ask which Gerloch is it? Is it the Gerloch or Gerloch West of Ross? It's and it is Gerloch and in West of Ross, right. um, kind of thirty miles from and yes, from no. Sheen. Yes. No, I know exactly where it is. Good, good. <laughs> it's fantastic. So it, and is it open? Um, is it? Uh, you can just access it any time. It's a. It's a council. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I know. I, I, I will tell you when I was first there, showing my age. Oh, no. it, was the year, it was the year Inverview was given to the National Trust. I've got a photograph of me in Inverview the first year right. it was taken over to wow. the National Trust. <laughs> yeah, I've never been, but it's just a strip along the front, isn't it? The, the long no. garden, so anyone can stop and sit yes. and look out. So while, is, it like, at Strath, or is it at Strath or is it before you get to Strath? Or Wendy, do you know? Wendy? I think it's before. Yes. Near the golf course. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's just down on the pier and there's yes. a castle yes. walk behind it. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, <laughs> uh, well, Leslie Ann, you've got your hand up. Hi, everybody. I'm new to this group. We've just recently signed up to It's Your Neighbourhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Leslie Ann from St. Friends of St. Fittix Park in Aberdeen. Uh, slightly different to what I'm hearing, although I'm loving what I'm hearing from everybody. It's really uh, encouraging. Um, we are we have a community park which is under threat of development at the moment, um, and we've been campaigning to save this park for about four years. Um, it's a wetlands. It's very biodiverse. Um, the nature in it is what the community love, and we believe the access to the nature is really healing and um, very important for education. So we have successfully won nearly £20,000 to put an outdoor classroom up in wow. the park. That's amazing. And we're really hoping to, it's on, we have to, we're pre-planning pre application at the moment. So it's basically just a shelter made of larch. It's sustainable, it can be moved. It's going in with ground screws, not concrete. Um, so we're very focused on sustainability and also this access to the wonderful nature we have around about us. And we're looking to work with schools. We have um, you know, Scottish Wildlife Trust interested perhaps in using the space. It's not very big. It is just like a six by four and a half metre shelter. But there is no shelter in the park to either just sit and enjoy the space or... Um, to, to, to run activities. Um, so we did a nature walk, a nature treasure hunt a couple of years ago and we had a big lunch in the park, um, which was a fantastic event and we really saw how people were connecting to that space. So we're hoping to to run programmes of um, with other groups. Uh, we will offer the space and uh, work with them to local community for kids' education to nature from you know, wee ones to, to big ones. Um, park walkers are interested in using the space and we want to do some sort of rewild, not rewilding, that's the wrong word, but use native plants from seed collection projects to enhance that space uh, as well. So I just want to give you a wee bit of a hello down of where I'm at, but uh, I also like a bit of gardening, but I don't seem to have the time, funnily enough. <laughs> 
Oh, it sounds an incredible project. And um, I may come back to you to come and speak at the seminar in December and share how you've got on because it sounds fantastic. Okay. And I'm planning with uh, Stephen Shaw, the environmental manager up in yes. Aberdeen. We're planning a regional networking event for groups in Aberdeen and around on the 17th of April. So yeah, I was I'll at the one in December, just as I guessed, if Stephen was Oh, you came that one. Yeah, Brilliant. That's got involved um but we're really looking forward to being part of the it's your neighborhood because we feel oh. we can really improve improve our um, green space around about us and thank yes. you for the opportunity oh you're welcome thank you um john you've got your hand up i stuck up my hand so i was wanting to know a wee bit more about and in what part of aberdeen this green space is and if it is within a park or if you've actually got ownership if you've got a permission to use and from the council in other words you can do your own sweet thing yeah, we have permission from Stephen Shaw um, to site the um, classroom. We're just waiting for the planning, app, oh, planning app, uh, approval to site the actual structure. But we had, did have to have permission before we um, entered into the award um, application for the money. Um, so we do mm -hmm. have that. It is, it is um, public land. And he said he had the authority to allow us to use that space. And we've been in discussion with him about how we can best do that. And we'll be furthering discussions with him about the using the um, you know native seeds to to replant some of the area. So it may not be a huge area, but it will be a start. And it does have an established wetlands. Um, that the community did raise about money to um, put in before many years ago. Uh, uh, as well as local business yeah. and the local authority. So we do have a, a working relationship with the local yeah. authority on this. Yeah. Is it too small and is it too small to have a forest school or forest kindergarten on? Um I mean uh, yes I, the park is a, a reasonable size. I think it's 17 hectares. Mm -hmm. Um but we have a small area within a, a yeah. that we have been allowed to to, to site this um, structure and work with um so it will still be a park but it will be a feature within the park a feature within. Good. there Thank is you. a lot of um the wetlands provides a good yeah. bit of habitat for yes. flowers and yeah. Yeah. birds Thank 217 you. species of birds migrate or use the park wow. over the year leslie have you been Thank to you. visit yuri riverside park in inverurie that, no, I uh, haven't. No, that's a nature oh. park really worth visiting. Okay. They're a nature neighborhood group, too. So, mm -hmm. okay, I'd love to connect with them if that's possible. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll write and a note. The, the, the park's in Torrey, I think John asked. Where it it is. Was. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes, Torrey. It's <laughs> um, there's another connecting park which has got um, a an listed Stevenson Lighthouse on it. Um, and that's near Great. I don't know if you've heard of Great Hope Bay where the dolphin watching takes place. There's a community cafe built there as well. Um, so there's quite a lot of activity community driven in Tory at the moment and um we're part of that, but quite an exciting place with challenges. Yeah. <laughs> exciting. Good. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um does anyone else want to if you don't want to speak, you can put um question or say something in the chat. Uh oh, Tom. Do you want to come in, Tom? Uh, sorry, I was just trying to unmute there. Um <laughs> Just a, a comment, uh, Juliet. I think for newcomers, uh, keep Scotland beautiful and it's your neighbour should neighbourhood should carry a government health warning oh. because it's so infectious no. when you get involved. Uh, I, I've found that uh, any uh, meetings or, or contacts uh, just. Uh, generate so much inspiration uh, that uh, I, I wish you could sort of develop a serum and inject people with it <laughs> to uh, get them all uh, enthusiastic and realising the potential there is in their community to come together and make good things happen. Yeah, you're all, yeah, you're all amazing groups and yeah, we could bottle you and Send you round. That would be incredible. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Laura, I don't know if Maura or Lorna was first, so if one of you wants to unmute. Oh, Lorna. I think it was Moira. I think she had her hand up first. Okay, that's very honest of you. Moira, would you like to unmute? Oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Uh, no, uh, well, we are newcomers as well, Leslie. Uh, so, Leslie Ann. Uh, so, Contour is one of the largest towns in Aberdeenshire, one of the top 10 in Aberdeenshire. 
And uh, we've had a floral display that the community council, which I'm chair of, has run for many years. Uh, and it's very successfully been supported by businesses, etc. But uh, it's always a problem getting volunteers for things. But we were very uh, encouraged last year because Contour is very well renowned for being flooding, for the flooding. So we used to have six uh, volunteers in our flood resilience team. And now last year during the floods, we raised that to 70 to help out during the flooding. So there's a lot of people now more willing to get involved with the community. Uh, we've done some uh, litter picking and weeding and all this and had bulb planting, which we got from green space. We got a lot of spring bulbs from green space, which is Aberdeenshire Council. Uh, and we've also got perennials as well. They're coming in April, I think it is. We've mm -hmm. also got Sustainable Contour, uh, which is an eco, an eco uh, environmental group. And this weekend they're planting um, a native species in the woods at Ghost Hill as well. So we wanted to get involved and get more people enthused about it in our community. And we're, and we're having some success. So I think joining something like this would, and having recognition at this level would help us attract those uh, volunteers as well. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad you found us and hopefully, yeah, you'll have a good year and great that you're getting more volunteers and doing more community activities. Um, yeah, great. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Lorna. Okay, so I'm quite new. Well, I'm very new to this, actually. I just kind of stumbled across you when I was looking for information about doing a litter pick. Oh. So I had, I'm just outside Aberdeen. I'm in Port Lesson, and I joined the community council at the end of last year. And um, a lot of our members are looking at things like local planning and all that type of stuff, which I know nothing about. So I thought, what can I concentrate on? And one of the things I've noticed locally for us is the amount of litter. So I contacted the local schools. So we have three primary schools and a high school. Um, I've had good responses from all of those. And I'm hoping to get them involved in maybe setting up, I don't know, say a monthly litter pick or something like that. Um, and there's also... I've discovered a Facebook group, um, which is something like Clean Up Port Lathan. I think it's got a better name than that, but that's got quite a few members as well. And I had a good response on there. I guess my question is, I've heard a lot from what you've been talking about, but what would be, or where would you signpost me to, to, I guess, maybe some more resources and, um, maybe look to get the kids some recognition if they do set up something that's regular. What would I be looking at there for them? So is this just for doing cleanups? Yes. Yeah, so I would put in touch with my colleague Heather, who she heads up the sort of the Clean Up Scotland, um, our Clean Up Scotland year-round initiative. Um, and yeah, they, there's lots of support and resources within those pages for you. And we have a I think they still do it. Clean up here of the month. You can nominate for recognition for that. We do press around that, obviously. Um, yeah, Wendy, you're very much more involved in that side of our work, so you might be able to share a bit more. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, Heather will be able to provide lots of um, different resources, but yeah, the um, clean up here are still um, ongoing, so that's something that you could think about. Um, but yeah, we work with lots of primary school children and we um, try to also do, and I would be really happy to speak to you in, in a separate call about this, but I do a lot of marine plastics workshops with the children as well. So do things like get plastic bottles, things that have been dropped in the street and get them to put cards next to them to say how long um, these will take to um uh, bio to degrade etc things like that so there's lots of exciting things that you can do to engage children and make them think about litter and where it's come from so um yeah really happy to chat more to you about that super thanks, thanks Wendy. and uh jen's just put in the chat i just printed our own certificates for our children who volunteered with our litter picks this month which they loved receiving 
but also one of our members suggested the children could be nominated by their parents for a blue Peter Green badge. That's really oh, nice. That's lovely. Oh, Thanks for sharing good. that. Thank you. Really nice. And then, oh, Lorraine, I've just seen what you're what you've shared in the chat. I don't know if you want to share that verbally or you want me to read it out. No, it's fine. Uh, so our, our project's a little bit different compared to everybody else's. Uh, we look after an old uh, graveyard in a mental asylum uh, that closed in 1994. So we've got people buried from 1895 to 1952 in our little graveyard. Uh, we recently installed a composting toilet, which seemingly is the first in North Lanarkshire. So it's brought a lot of interest. Um, and everybody wants to come and see it. So you're more than welcome if you don't have a composting toilet to come and have a look. <laughs> um, it was fully funded by the renewable energies as well, which was really good. Um, but because we're isolated and off grid, we had no access to water or electricity. So um, yeah. it's in the same position, more than welcome to come and see it. Thanks, Lorraine. I know, Vanessa, your group is a cemetery group as well, isn't it? Oh, you're on mute. <clears throat> oh, yes, I was really interested in your little cemetery because we've got one in the middle of Morningside, which is a very populous residential area. But uh, and it's a big green space. It was very, very neglected, but it has a very determined group of volunteers, some of whom have generations of relatives who are buried there. And um, this year we got outstanding for our it's your neighborhood efforts, thousands of bulbs, species, roses, it's beginning to look alive. Although, you know, we, we we'll, then we'll have to start thinking about raising money to get some of these memorial stones lifted up because it's really quite a problem. But we managed to get the glyphosate stopped. We were the first cemetery to do that. And now Edinburgh stopped them completely over all of the Sites and it's really made a difference to the variety of grasses growing up around the stones. So we've got like close, it's called relaxed mowing because they're, you know, like everywhere else, they're short staffed, they've limited resources, but we get sort of green pathways mown close and then other areas where grasses have just been allowed to just grow. And it's amazing how many more varieties of plants there are amongst now amongst all these um, stones. We're going to put benches down uh, because of the, the, the skeleton of a lime avenue from the sort of Victorian formation of this um, cemetery. So all sorts of exciting things. And um, I was saying to Juliet, who, the, the network has just been so encouraging. <laughs> And to hear that there are people just sort of getting excited and getting pitched in to sort of do things. Because even if it's little, if there's a few of you, it sort of builds up, it sort of builds up the momentum. So we're going to develop a, a meadow on top of a ray, a large. Oh. oh, no, we've lost you, Vanessa, you're frozen. Oh, what a shame. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get Vanessa back, but Bob, you've yes. got your hand. Oh, okay. Vanessa, you've come back. You froze for a little bit then. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. Right. So, well, did, I, I don't know if you got that. We had a couple of folk from community engagement officers from the Botanic Gardens a couple of days ago to come and give us some advice about perennial seed packs, annual seed packs. From this, uh, They deal with scotia seeds, but there are other people as well who produce this kind of stuff. So... It's all out there. And also, too, oh, before I go, uh -huh, we got an award from our local MP who dreamed up a sort of community award for people who did a little bit extra in their neighbourhood during lockdown. And we got picked out for one of these. So oh, he's going to come up to the he's going to come up to the cemetery and um, be filmed or photographed doing a bit of litter picking or tidying up. <laughs> well, send so, us a story in the photo for the newsletter. That'd be a great one to share. Okay. Yes. <laughs> delighted. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Vanessa. Um, Bob, you've got your hand up. Hi there. Thanks, Juliet. Uh, the, it's great to hear about everyone's, you know, just how how, how diverse uh, everybody is with the, the type of projects that they have. Uh, I think one of the things that we certainly had a, a wee bit of success with last year, and it was a wee bit nervous to try it, was our social media engagement where we 
we started doing the wee kind of videos. It was like almost creating kind of characters with some of our team members. Uh, but it was just to try and see what sort of additional demographic we could engage with, with regards to the, you know, kind of to a degree, kind of maybe a younger demographic, you know, uh, and bringing the garden, the community garden into uh, people's houses and their phones and their laptops and their tablets, uh, just to see, you know, how, how we got on with that. And uh, we found we had quite a lot of success with that. I, uh, you know, e even to the point where some of us are, you know, getting stopped in the street and asked the, the kind of old kind of kind of garden question and things like that. I, uh, but one of the other things that we we found came from that as well, is that we, and we we didn't really kind of realise it until we were contacted. Is that were some members of the public who we found were actually isolated. They, a couple of people who had long COVID and hadn't been out of their home for a long period of time and so on, actually managed to find the group. And find us via uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and so on. And we, we could actually see that it was having a benefit to those people who were not able to get out, but then could actually see the garden and what we were doing on a weekly basis uh, straight you know, into their front rooms, essentially beaming the community garden into their front rooms and so on. Uh, and we've, we've had encouragement to continue with that this year and you know, we're, we're trying to expand in that a wee bit. And I was just wondering if other groups have had any success with that and, and what sort of experience they've had uh, trying to uh, use their kind of social media platforms. Anyone want to share successes or otherwise? Oh, Kevin, you got your hand up. Oh, you're you're on mute at the moment. Still on mute. Can't hear you, Kevin. <laughs> oh. Does anyone else? I know Wendy. Did you not a long time ago use Facebook to find the people that had burnt a picnic table down, and then you got them engaged in your group? I've got some. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I mean, we have used it in various ways, but I think. I, I suppose we have changed very much over the years and the way that we've used it just because of the way that the public have started to use social media. We, we feel we have to be quite careful, actually. So, but you're right, way back in 2015, um, we did have a really awful case of vandalism when people burned down a picnic table and stuff. And we did have um, evidence of who it was. So we went on and we put um, a photograph and said, look, we do know who did this. We know how it happened, but why don't you um, come and talk to us and let's see if we can, you know, you can help us to restore it and to get things back rather than go down another route. So they did. They came back and they helped us to restore that area and they also helped us to build a wheelchair accessible path at the time that we were doing. So that was very successful. And we have had other, well, this is very early on, probably 2016, 2017. Sometimes we found significant amounts of litter or something, which we were able to identify exactly where it had come from. So sometimes we went and visited people with that litter. And I'm talking about, you know, really big items or a big pile of it. And try to engage them, try to talk to them. But, uh, you know, it's it's not an easy thing to negotiate now because social media can be a, a difficult place to be. Um, generally now, I think we try to be really positive about the way in which we engage the public on social media. And um, But, again, we, we have found that we, we can be very successful, um, you know, in the way that we've done that, but um, it does require quite a lot of skill. So it's not the easiest place to be. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. Uh, Kevin, yes, you're on, you're on. Yep, I'm, not I'm off. <laughs> right. I think, uh, to be honest with you, we've, we've actually had quite a success with social media. We're originally the Community Council page has something like about 500 uh, members. 
it's now up to 1,400, so it's actually swelled it quite a lot. We do get a lot of interaction with a lot of other groups. There is a lot of other places that are trying to get groups set up, but just can't get the, the membership and motivation to do it, uh, which is maybe a bit frustrating for other areas. Uh, but because like, we're one of the bigger villages, I think, we and the fact is we've got a Christmas events that we do run. We've got a lot of people coming from other areas. Uh, and you keep on hoping that maybe there's more groups will set up. But it's just, it's it's probably hard for them as well. And some people don't know how to access funding. And it's a lot of, there's a lot of things. And then the fact is that they're, they're closing a lot of community centres in this area as well, which is, go, well, a lot, they're trying to close a lot. Plus some might go to charitable status. So it's going to be hard to try and keep all these things going as well. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Um, I'm aware it's now eight o'clock, so <laughs> I don't know if there's any last question or any last thing anyone wants to share. Um, no? Well, um, I hope you've enjoyed and got something out of being here tonight. And um, like I said, I'm always on the email. Liz, sorry, are you wanting to say something? <laughs> I just saw your finger pointing, sorry. Hello, I was just going to say, I think Leslie Ann still want to say something. <laughs> oh, sorry, Leslie Ann. I saw a thumbs up earlier and then I didn't see a hand. And then Chris as well. Uh, so I just really quickly, it might be really helpful. What we've done in other groups, um, we've been really connecting with a lot of the local community groups with the campaign and the classroom. And um, we found there's a real need for people to know where to get funding. So we've kind of collated where people can get funding with somebody from NESCAN, Northeast Climate Action <laughs> network who comes along to some meetings and tells us what funding's available so it might be nice to set up um like a shared funding page or a shared funding bulletin every month about where you can possibly get funding some of them are very short term you know you can only mm -hmm. apply for two months so like national lotteries ongoing but it might be quite nice to somebody to you know pop in a a note to Juliet uh, what funding that might be suitable for people to apply for in all areas would that be helpful yeah. Any that I any that I hear of, so yeah, if people can tell me once they hear of, I put in the newsletter. So oh, you do okay, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 you're new. I'm so new, you know forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, uh, Chris. Julia, yeah, thanks for the invitation. It's been an interesting evening. Notable that we don't really talk about plants, and I suppose it wasn't planting that I was, I was picking most up. Um, we're trying to restore the old rose garden in Lin Linlithgow. Um. The first challenge we've got is how, what's our relationship with the council? So I was very interested to hear um, the discussion about uh, St. Fittix and Torrey, um, about the relationship. And I pick out a name there, Stephen Shaw, because I communicated with Stephen and he passed me on to uh, representative of the Friends of Duthie Park, um, who emphasised that the really important thing is to work with the council, not to work in opposition to, to these people. Um, that's a little challenge we have is to try and get our lot to understand that we're trying to work with them um given that thank you very much to everybody else for their contributions i was interested to hear what was said thank you oh, a really good point thank you for making that chris yeah it's very true no matter how difficult it is relationship we've got with the council it's really important to try and work with them and yeah thank you uh oh is that a hand up again leslie ann yeah so just from our experience um chris it's we're very lucky to make some extremely good officers within the council although the council themselves as a body might look like they're objecting to something but it's finding a really um cooperative and interested council uh, uh officer that would that's that's what Stephen he's very interested in what we're doing and very supportive uh, although you know we might come up against challenges in the future with the council itself um it's really important to find a, a, an officer that you can work with and um who will support you but you've maybe already done that. We're, we're trying. <laughs> but no, I take an absolute point. And it was, I had a very short communication with Stephen, but he passed me on to um, people who could help me and who I had a, a remarkably useful discussion with yesterday. Oh, Thank good. you very much. Get the press involved as well. Mm -hmm. Good shout. Get the press involved. All yeah. right. I'm going to stop the recording now. And